I think the main reason I became a patron was the community that's grown up around the podcast. And I'm from a small village in Ireland and we're quite a tight-knit little community. And Gettysburg, seeing how people talk about Gettysburg and people who live there, how they feel about it, it reminds me of my home. The way they look at Gettysburg feels like how I look at my home, Points Pass. They're very proud of it. They're very proud to live there. And they're dedicated to it. And addressing Gettysburg is a credit to the town it's from and a credit to its producers and everyone who's worked on it so hard. So keep it up and thanks so much for all the hard work you do. From the Gettysburg Museum of History Studios, you're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this uh, recording of our wildly popular Spotlight On series. And tonight we are putting what, the spot- was wildly popular what? until was wildly popular <laughs> until you had it. Right, this is the end of it. Uh, the wildly popular Spotlight On series, and tonight we're putting the spotlight on two people. Usually we do one, but tonight it's two, and we've got our friend Cody Aish and Pete Mealy from the Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center. Give them a warm welcome to their own place, please. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So good to be here this evening. Yeah, you're enjoying yourself so far? Yeah. So d- we're doing this now, before we get into things here, we're, we're doing this during what I call the 24 hours of hell, which is where, but you call it the 24 hours on the ridge, and um, you, you're up all night. It's 24 hours, the seminary is open. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first year you did this, I was able to actually complete, uh, not 24 hours, but till, till dawn, basically. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a really cool experience. Are any of you going to try to make it to dawn, at least? All one, right. one person? Okay. Now, everybody else, like, no, I can't do it. I can't make it to the dawn. I, I could barely make it to 11 o'clock anymore. So, um, But it's a really neat experience, especially going up to the cupola uh, at like, well, whenever, midnight. You know, whenever. We are doing a midnight tour. I actually just had, uh, right before we came on, I saw that two Two people signed up for that. So Good. we are doing a midnight tour up there. There's something about, like, you could go, you know, what, it gets dark at, what, 6 o'clock now or something like that. So you could go up there at 7 o'clock and it's dark, but it's not the same as going at midnight when you know all of Gettysburg is asleep. Most of it. <laughs> Mostly. Uh, and you're up there all by yourself. So anyway, um, let's get talking about you guys. Um, you've made some names for yourself as historians. And uh, people, uh, you have a huge hand, obviously, in this museum here. And it's a really great museum. People love it. Uh, and yes, we give them a round of applause for that. <laughs> it's nothing like, nothing like asking for your own round of applause. <laughs> I hate that. But <laughs> it's the worst. Okay, so, uh, but yeah, and, and you've done a great job with it. Everybody that I know that has come here absolutely loves it. Do you guys have a favorite floor out in the audience here? Just shout out your favorite floor if you have a favorite floor. Mine's the medical floor. I love the medical floor. No one has a favorite. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> medical too? Yeah, okay. Um, what, how long have you been involved? Well, first of all, before we get to that, we'll get up to this point here. Where were you born? Let's start with you, Pete. Begin your life for us. Okay. I was born in uh, Hackensack, New Jersey, Hackensack Hospital. Uh, I grew up in a small town called Harrington Park, New Jersey. We're best known because uh, it is also the hometown of Cory Booker, who Ah. is the uh, junior senator. I was going to say, is he junior or senior? Did did, uh, Menendez resign? No, he's a junior (laughs) junior senator from the from the great state of New Jersey. Uh, He was mayor of Newark. He was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I liked him as mayor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's a good guy. But uh, no, that's that's what our town is known for. A small town of about four thousand people, and uh, went to school there. Went to Ramapo College in New Jersey, and. Uh, ended up teaching in my old high school after I graduated from college and had thought that I really wanted to be a, a, an educator and got into the classroom and realized that it was not fulfilling. So I discovered this new field, or it wasn't new, it was new to me, called public history. And I said, what is that? I had no idea that people work in museums. And what is that? What is public yeah, history? Yeah, so basically it's working at museums and historic sites, anything that 
helps the public learn and experience history outside of a, of a formal classroom. So I decided that I was going to move to Gettysburg and try to figure out my life. Now, did you, were you always interested in the Civil War? From, from yeah, young age, uh, when I was probably about five, my parents took us to the Intrepid in New York City. And they bought me a placemat of all of the presidents. And within a few weeks, I had memorized all of the presidents. And my parents, like, used it as a parlor trick. <laughs> you know, at parties, they'd, they'd trot me out, and, you know, throw me a number. 21, Chester Arthur. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I really, I, that just gives you an example of how I was how I was into history from a young age and and the Civil War always interested me and so when I was looking for a place to move Gettysburg was sort of is is sort of ground zero for for the Civil War but what would now growing I grew up in New Jersey too so sorry well I know so (laughs) so what was it like growing up for you up there now, because you're in like the hoity-toity area, yeah, right? yeah. We were we were living in the hoity-toity, but right. we weren't hoity-toity. You weren't hoity. Hoity. Yeah, you worked yeah. for the hoity-toity. Yes. your family. Yeah. yeah. So no, but what was it like working or not working, but living like growing up there? What you do as a kid? Like how'd you what you play? Yeah, yeah. So you know the town that I grew up in, suburban, uh, small, but it's called Harrington Park because it's it's very park like. So uh, you know, spent a lot of time outside and and. Um, going to Revolutionary War historic sites in that area. Um, you know, my parents would take us on on vacations up and down the, the East Coast. We'd, we'd come out to Lancaster County, Amish country a lot. We'd go to Cape Cod. But we were always doing, whenever we would go places, we would be doing history and, and cultural stuff. I think my, my, my mother really valued that. So that, that got me interested in in history, but I, I never thought about the fact that there are people that have to work in museums, that work in museums, that all of these sites that I'm going to, there are people that actually work there. So it was not something that was, was on my radar. But if you've been to northern New Jersey, you know how unbelievably congested it, congested it is and how unbelievably, and I see some people nodding their heads, how unbelievably expensive it is. So after living there and, and growing up uh, for, I was 24 when I moved out here, I, I was ready for something different. I was ready to have a, have a different experience. So, so you're not a city person. I'm, I'm not a city. And that's the weird thing is that you live in the area and, and I barely went to New York City. I mean, yeah. my parents would take us once or twice a year. and But when I got into college, I, I would go um, with with friends from college, but it was never really... Where would you go? Oh, gosh. Like historic sites? Or um, you... We did do some historic... Oh, well, this is an interesting anecdote. My my college roommate and I, uh, the nerds that we are, because uh, we're still friends, for spring break our junior year, we went to Washington, D.C. and visited a whole bunch of historic sites. And our, our senior year spring break we went to boston and did the freedom trail like a really wild time yeah you guys are crazy yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it was you know <laughs> get a nosebleed frat boys yeah right <laughs> um yeah but i mean we would we would go to the city and and i mean my roommate and i went to the intrepid you know sure. that sort of thing so it it but it just kind of wasn't it wasn't my scene i'm i'm much more into you know give me give me mountains and a lake and yeah. and, and outdoors and like the ruins of an old mill or something yeah. like that yeah oh. yeah give me that any day yeah <laughs> there's a really cool uh, revolutionary war based tour i took years ago of uh southern manhattan the southern tip yeah, of manhattan yeah yeah and like you end up at France's Tavern and everything, and that that opened my eyes. Like I, I grew an appreciation for Manhattan after that tour. Uh, the rest of it, I have no use for, but right. that was pretty neat. And and I actually, and surprisingly, I never did that. I never went to the Statue of Liberty. Went to Ellis Island a few times. Not on school field trips, even. Uh, no, no, we had really? a school field trip to Ellis Island. We had a school field trip to um, Museum of Natural History. 
that was it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we Rockefeller and, Center. You didn't do that. No, we used to do that. My parents would take us there uh, the fourth Sunday of Advent every year. And we're not overly religious, but we would go to Mass at St. Patrick's and then go to Rockefeller oh, yeah. Center and then go to FAO Schwartz. Ah. Right on. <laughs> yeah, but we wouldn't buy anything because we didn't have any money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'd see all the toys that we really wanted that couldn't we couldn't afford. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. How about you, Cody? Where'd you grow up? So I grew up in, in York County, uh, was born a great day to be born. If you're, uh, uh, going to be a civil war historian from York County, I was born on June 28th, 1993. So Wrightsville bridge day, sure. George Meade day, uh, on the 130th anniversary right. of those How events. fitting that you work here now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. My, my destiny. <laughs> and what about you growing up in York? what did you do for fun? So I was uh, played baseball, was in scouts, um, interested in history from a from a pretty young age as well. Do you remember um, what got you interested in history? I don't remember what specific instance it was, but even before I was interested in, in Civil War history, which which came in second grade watching the movie Gettysburg. Um, even before that, though, going to uh, historic sites with my grandfather. Uh, my grandparents lived in Johnstown. And we would go to French and Indian War sites, Fort Ligonier, Fort Necessity, Bushy Run Battlefield, uh, a lot of industrial and, and coal uh, history sites, old coal mines, things like that. Uh, the Winber Coal Museum was a, was a big hit for me as a kid. Um, and uh, a lot of uh, like immigration history. There was the Johnstown uh, Discovery Heritage Center. And, and so those stories were the first ones that I remember really grabbing me as, you know, probably kindergarten, first grade, something like that. We had a lot of family camping trips then. We had a pop-up camper. We'd take it mostly through South Central Pennsylvania, and we'd go out to, to Granite Hill and, uh, and ran, Round Top Campgrounds here in Gettysburg. And I could never quite grasp like what it meant that a Civil War battlefield happened here uh, or, or was here. I, remembered, uh, I remember going up in the National Tower, I think a year, maybe two years before it was taken down. So this is like 1998, 1999. And we got to the bottom of it, and uh, and I remember we were like getting in the car, and I said to my dad, "I don't quite understand. Like, where did this? Where did? Where is the battlefield then? You know, like, I can see it from above, but on the ground, where is it?" And he said, you know, "We're surrounded by it. You're on it." Yeah. And uh, and then it wasn't long after that that we rented from the uh, from the Dover uh, Community Library, which coincidentally is only like a mile from my house where I live today. Uh, for a, a dollar for the weekend, you could you could get VHS tapes. And right. My mom uh, saw that they had Gettysburg there and uh, rented it. And she said, this was, this was released the year you were born. And that was the first thing that I thought, oh, that's interesting. And I certainly know Gettysburg. And then I think I watched it twice during the course of that weekend, fell asleep uh, during the, the first showing. And then the next day, instead of continuing where I left off, I just, uh, just restarted Watch the whole thing. And, and yeah. I was kind of hooked from there. And do you remember what was it when you saw the movie? Um, or even for you, Pete, when you got into the president's, right? What was it that like clicked with you from the movie, from the president's place, Matt? Like what was, what, do you remember what happened in your head? I think it was that idea of a, of a moving visualization of events. Uh, to know that I had been at the places that are portrayed in the film and, uh, I could now picture, like, oh, that's that's what this historical event must have looked like. And closely related to that, you know, as has been the case for a lot of people over the past three decades, the, the story, the, the Chamberlain story was, you know, what really grabbed me. And it was the following summer, I think, maybe two summers later, my parents, you know, asked me, oh, where do you want to go for our summer vacation? Where, where would you like to see? And I said, I want to go to Brunswick, Maine. I want to go. I want to go to. I want to go to the Chamberlain House. They had to look it up. They're like, exactly. where? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we we did. We made the we made the, the Chamberlain tour of Maine. We went to uh, we went to Brunswick, saw his house, saw uh, Bowdoin College. I uh, went to Brewer and saw his birthplace. Um, we went to Augusta to the State Museum, which said on its website that it had the 20th Maine Regimental flag on display. But it was being, it was undergoing. Listen to the rest of this interview and dozens like it. Support the show and get early access to special episodes, early and discounted ticket sales, and more. The second lieutenant level and above gets access to all monthly Patreon episodes. So please go to patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg, choose a tier, and join. And I thank you in advance.